So I decided to do a couple of measurements to see which ink tablet in the 10 inch segment actually has the best front load. The contenders are the Books Note Air 2 Plus, 3 and 3C, the Books Tab Ultra, Tab Ultra C and Tab Ultra C Pro, the Pocketbook Inkbed X Pro and Inkbed EO, the Kindle Scribe, the Kobo Ellipso 2E, the Lenovo Smart Paper and the Big Me Ink Note X. So the first measurement is the maximum brightness, both with the cold white and the warm orange light setting. To ensure accurate and comparable results, I measured the brightness and uniformity using a 3 by 4 grid across the screen. This approach helps in capturing the average values and identifying any significant deviations in different parts of the screen. So these structured measurements provide a consistent basis for comparing the frontlet performance of each device. The top three devices in this category with a maximum frontlet brightness of over 100 nits for both the cold white and warm orange LEDs are the Kobo Ellipsa 2E, the Kindle Scribe, and the Booksnote Air 3. On the other side of the list is the Big Me Ink Note X, which has a very low maximum cold white brightness level of just 24 four nits. But what do those numbers actually mean? Well, over a hundred nits brightness is very bright for ink. Even in well-lit surroundings, this brightness level allows for improving readability even further. Not that you necessarily need it for ink Carta, which all three of these hundred plus nits devices have, but it's still nice to have regardless. The 24 nits on the Ink Note X, on the other hand, are really pretty dim, especially considering that this is an Ink Kaleido 3 device. Kaleido 3 results in darker screen background in general, so I'd like to see at least 30 to 35 nits as the absolute minimum for this screen tag. With 40 nits, we move into a territory where you can comfortably use the screen indoors, in my opinion, and 50 nits and above is what I consider good enough for pretty much everybody. So the Bookstep Ultra C and the Pocketbook Inkbed EO are in that category, with most other Kaleido 3 devices hovering around 40 nits maximum brightness for the cold white LEDs. With the warm orange LEDs, I'm less strict because that's typically only in use in dim environments, closer to bedtime. So you usually dial down the brightness more so while it's still nice to have a brighter screen with those LEDs as well, I think 30 nits brightness is totally fine in that case. Most of the time, I even set the brightness much lower than that at night, but the maximum brightness is just one part of the equation. The second and arguably more important part is actually the evenness of the front light. Having an even front light is incredibly important so that the screen is not just bright, but also offers a consistently good experience no matter what part of the screen you're looking at. The more even the front LED, the better. I rated the front LED evenness with two different approaches. The first one is simple. I just calculated the difference between the brightest and the dimmest part on the screen. The lower the difference, the better. In that category, the Bookstep Ultra C offers the best front LED. It's very uniform with just a 6% difference between the brightest and the dimmest part of the screen. Right behind the books tablet is the Kindle Scribe, which is the only other tablet on that list to have a brightness difference of under 10%. So like the books tab Ultra C, the Kindle Scribe also has a very uniform front LED, but actually gets much brighter if needed. Two honorary mentions go to the Books Note Air 3C and the Kobo Ellipsa 2E, which both aren't too far behind the others. The Books Note Air 3 and the Pocketbook Inkbed X Pro, on the other hand, have pretty obvious brightness gradients, so those aren't great if you're as sensitive to uneven frontlets as I am. In general, I'd say anything under 15% is barely noticeable on a 10 inch screen and obviously the lower the brightness differences are, the better. For the second approach to rate evenness, I calculated the variation coefficient, which provides a measure of the dispersion of the data. So the lower the variation, the better. Taking this approach, the rating is similar, but we get a few more insights. The Bookstep Ultra C 
Kindle Scribe and Coburn Lipsa 2e move closer together, meaning all three have very even frontlets. The Booksnote AF3C, on the other hand, looks a bit less uniform by rating the front leg like this. It's still good, but not as good as the other three. At the bottom of the list, we see the Pocketbook Inkpad X Pro, which to be fair has a vertically illuminated front leg, which makes it a bit less problematic, but still it's not very even. So in my opinion, anything with a variation coefficient of under 3% is excellent, and up to 5% is pretty good, and gradients are barely noticeable in that range. With moving closer to 10%, brightness gradients typically become more obvious and are noticeable even if you're not sensitive to them. Since the maximum brightness is so different across all of these devices, I also made a second measurement with a light setting at around roughly 40 nits to see if that changes anything regarding frontlight uniformity. And while there were some minor changes with some devices, the overall picture essentially stays the same. If a frontlet isn't uniform with its maximum brightness, it won't get much better when dialing down the brightness, at least not when looking at the percentages. But reducing the brightness still helps because the differences become smaller when looking at the absolute numbers, which means that with the naked eye, they become less obvious. Brightness is also not the only thing that's important to look at to assess evenness. Color temperature differences can also be quite distracting. And those don't necessarily correlate with the brightness differences. So what I mean is that the screen might have a slightly different color temperature at one side than the other. This effect is generally more obvious with a cold white front light setting and most of the time not an issue with the warm orange setting. Looking at the cold white temperature differences, the Kindle Scribe manages to come out on top of the list, followed by the Kobo Lipsa 2e. Here I'd say everything below 5% is great, and around 5-7% to still pretty good. Anything more than that can be a bit more obvious. Last but not least, I also checked the minimum brightness levels because the best front LED is useless if you get blinded while using it at night. And here I really have no complaints. Even the brightest device in the list, the Lenovo Smart Paper with 1.5 nits, is still dim enough to not cause issues for most people. Many others can be much dimmer than that, to the point that you can comfortably use that setting even in complete darkness because it's so dim. So what's the final verdict? Putting every measurement together, we can score each aspect relative to its impact on the overall user experience. Each aspect is rated based on how it compares to the best score achieved in that category. At the top of our list, we have the Kindle Scribe and the Kobo Ellipsa 2e, which excel not just in brightness, but in maintaining consistency and uniformity, which are critical for a front light. The Books Tab Ultra C is not far behind also showing strong performance. So devices scoring above 85% are delivering excellent front light quality, while those above 70% are still performing very well. If the score dips below 70%, you might start noticing some unevenness in the front light. Though how much this affects you in general can vary widely depending on personal sensitivity. Overall, the Kindle Scribe takes the lead with the best balance with all metrics I checked. And really, that doesn't come as a huge surprise because for many years now, Amazon consistently manages to release ink devices with excellent front lights. Which brings me to one final point I still want to mention. In my experience, there's always a bit of variance in ink devices when it comes to the front light. It's totally possible to compare two devices of the same line, but one has a great front LED and the other one is a bit worse. That's due to manufacturing tolerances. So while it's important to take a structured and reproducible approach for measuring front LED performance as I just did, the outcome might not be true for every single device out there. But I think it's typically still a good indicator of what to expect, especially with Amazon and Kobo, which in my experience have the most reliable quality control and offer the most consistent quality as a result. That's it for this comparison. 
I continue doing these measurements for new devices, so like and subscribe if you found this helpful and don't want to miss future reviews and comparisons. Thanks for your time watching and see you in the next one.